A small plane made an emergency landing right on I-76 near Brush, Colorado. The FAA is now investigating the incident in Washington County. It's the fourth incident in our area involving a small plane in the past month. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jeremy Hohola. The single engine Cessna 172 landed on the interstate around 2.30 this afternoon. Thankfully, it did not hit any cars or anything else on the ground. Two people were on board. Nobody was hurt. It took about an hour for a cruise to haul the plane off the interstate. They then took it to the Fort Morgan Airport. It's not clear yet what led up to this emergency landing. Today's emergency landing comes less than three weeks after a small plane crashed into a mobile home park in Steamboat Springs. The pilot and passenger were killed in the crash on June 17th. A preliminary report from the NTSB says the pilot reported having engine trouble before the plane went down. It crashed less than a half a mile from the Steamboat Springs Airport. The day before that, a pilot tried to make an emergency landing on I-25 in Douglas County. The plane ended up crashing in a field just off the interstate near Larkspur. Both people on board survived but were hospitalized with serious injuries. And then about a week and a half before that, on June 7th, a small plane went down in someone's yard in Arvada. Four people were on board that aircraft. One person died at the hospital. The NTSB says, report says the pilot reported having engine trouble before this crash as well. People are recovering tonight after falling through a second story deck in Evergreen. They were celebrating a child's birthday party at the time. Nine News reporter Lauren Scafidi explains how everybody is doing right now. Lauren. Jeremy, three children were hospitalized. None of those injuries were serious, though I don't think anyone would have ever imagined that the celebration would have ended up looking like this. Caution tape surrounds what started as a child's birthday party. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see, but Elk Creek Fire says about 50 people were on the second story deck when all of a sudden it collapsed. Fortunately, there was no one under the deck when it collapsed, and fortunately, it was mostly a lot of bumps and bruises. Elk Creek Fire says an ambulance took three kids to the hospital for minor injuries. The spokesperson, Bethany Urban, adds most of the kids at the party were between 5 and 10 years old. Kids and parents and friends and family, sounds like they're doing okay. It was a freaky situation, marking a first in Urban's career. I have not been on a deck collapse in Maybe not ever myself, but you know, here up in the mountains, we get a lot of different calls. A lot of interesting things happen. We kind of never know what, you know, what we're going to walk into. We're so grateful that, that there, no one was hurt worse than they were. Um, it could have been a lot more serious. There's still no word on what caused that deck to come down. And while Urban says she's never worked on a situation like this, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission estimates there are hundreds of injuries like this across the country every year. Live in the studio, Lauren Scafidi, 9 News. And just into the newsroom, Denver police are investigating a deadly motorcycle crash. It happened at the intersection of 19th and Broadway. Police say the person on the motorcycle has died after being taken to the hospital. The motorcycle was the only vehicle involved. And police tell us the driver of a pickup truck crashed into two children riding electric scooters in Aurora today. Police say the kids were on East Dartmouth near South Richford Street when this happened. Both children were hospitalized. One of them had minor injuries. It's not clear yet how the other child is doing tonight. Police say the driver did not do anything wrong and stayed at the scene. Well, today was the first 90 degree day of the month, but don't count on that again tomorrow. We are in for a cool down along with some storm chances. I think a lot of people, Lauren, are going to be looking forward to that. I think, you know, 70 degree weather is going to be nice for summer. Yeah, well, it always feels a little better after a hot afternoon. And today we had exactly that as temperatures reached the 90s. We were very sunny, very dry. We've been saying all along can't rule out a pop up shower, and that's exactly what we're seeing across northern portions of the front range and eastern plains, even dipping into central portions of the plains. But you'll notice all of these showers are very brief, very light, maybe a couple of lightning bolts. That's really all we're going to get from these as they continue to clear out as we go through the rest of the evening. But coming up, in my full seven day forecast. We're going to talk more about the clear and breezy evening we're going to see tonight in Denver. As we move into the day tomorrow, we're going to see those temperatures drop quite a bit. We're also going to watch for storm chances and the heat returns in my seven day forecast. All of that for you just ahead.
Alrighty, one person is dead and another is critically hurt after a boating accident in southwest Colorado. It happened around 2.30 this afternoon near Windsurf Beach in Navajo State Park. Colorado Parks and Wildlife says three people were on an inflatable tube being pulled, pulled by a boat when another boat hit the tube. One person died at the scene. Another was airlifted to the hospital. The third person on the tube was not hurt. It's not clear yet if the person driving the boat is facing any charges. Crews are getting a better handle on the Oak Ridge fire burning in Pueblo County. The fire is now 50% contained. Lightning started that fire on June 22nd, about three miles northwest of Beulah. The fire has burned nearly 1,200 acres so far. The Aurora Reservoir is now back to its normal hours after complaints about too many people and issues with alcohol. The city of Aurora temporarily cut back hours over complaints of large crowds there. Now weekend hours are the same as week weekday hours, 5 o'clock in the morning to 930 at night. However, temporary restrictions banning alcohol and loud music are still in effect. Windsor Lake in the town of Windsor is closed again because of blue green algae blooms. That means people are not allowed to tube and water ski in the water there. Boaters are allowed, but the town does not recommend that. In May, the town launched new sonic buoys, which use ultrasonic waves to disrupt the algae in the water. That deprives algae of sunlight and staff are keeping an eye on those buoys to monitor the water quality. Today marks 100 years since a northern Colorado funeral was crashed by an unexpected guest. A meteorite came crashing down right next to the service. It is now proudly displayed at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Nine News reporter Evan Krugel has the story of this long journey. The small town of Johnstown, Colorado, is the type of place where practically everyone has family in the town cemetery. Yes, he is buried right in the cemetery here. Denise Seymour never met her great grandfather, John Moore, but she's heard all about his funeral. Yes, <laughs> I can say that. Because 100 years ago today, as her family laid him to rest, the service was interrupted. Yes. <laughs> by a meteorite. A 12 pound piece of space rock landing just feet away. When they heard the heard it hit, they thought the world was ending. They went and dug up the meteorite and then went and finished the funeral. It's the first documented example of a meteorite landing <laughs> during a funeral. You can trust Professor Richard Benzel, <laughs> not just because of his white lab coat, but because he's been studying asteroids for decades. That meteoroid hit the atmosphere, the friction made it heat up, burning trail in the sky, and the piece that landed that you can pick up is called a meteorite. And today is the first time this meteorite has been back to its landing spot in 100 years. So go ahead and give them a round of applause, please. Today, a few dozen people gathered to see the rock, which now lives at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. 100 years, it's worth celebrating. 100 years in the making, so. 100 years on Earth and a few billion more before it got here. Just a little bit older than I am, so. <laughs> Why that rock chose to crash John Moore's funeral, family will never know. Of all the places that a meteor could fall, the rock landed in Johnstown, we've all landed here. And there's some cosmic significance to that. Proof this small uh, town is okay. truly out of this world. Happy birthday, In Johnstown. Thank you. Evan Krugel. Nine News. A blind horse that became stuck in a canal is safe tonight. It's all thanks to the Pooter Fire Authority's animal rescue team. Pooter Fire says they got this call just before 10 o'clock this morning. The horse named Lacey was stuck up to her shoulders near the water or in the water near the intersection of North Giddings Road and East County Road 56. A firefighter trained for swift water situations put a harness on the horse and helped guide her to an easy area to get to dry land. She didn't have the strength, though, to get up on her own, so crews sedated the horse, then used ropes and a board to pull her right out. She has some cuts on her legs, but is otherwise doing all right. Rescuing a kitten stuck in a storm drain pipe took a team effort. 
West Metro, West Metro Fire posted on social media today that the animal spent four days stuck in that pipe that was about 120 feet long. Two people named Max and Cat, yes, Cat, say they tried just about everything to get the poor kitten out. At one point, had duct taped a phone to a tree limb cutter to try and get like a view of it and, and then, then did it from both ends. And then we couldn't reach far enough, obviously. And when nothing we did worked, we called the fire department. So then the fire department ran a hose into the pipe to flush water down it. That did the trick. You know, cats don't like water. They caught the kitten not long after that. Max and Cat planned to adopt the cat after its 10-day quarantine period.